Okay, so we've made a 10% stock solution of yeast by adding 2.5 grams of yeast to 25 centimetre cubed of distilled water. What we're now going to do is take 2 centimetres cubed of that out. Okay, and draw that up into the syringe till we've got our two. And we're going to add that to our clean bottle. Okay, we're going to shake that and we're going to add it to another bottle. We're going to add two centimetres cubed of sodium alginate to that and then give it a good mix. So I've already drawn up two centimetre cubed of sodium alginate into this syringe and I'm going to put that into the bottle with a 10% yeast solution and give that a wee shake. Okay, and already. Okay, so now we are going to draw up our mixture of yeast and sodium alginate into a dropper. And what we're going to do is drop that into our calcium chloride solution. And upon hitting the calcium chloride solution, we should start to see little bottles or little beads forming. And inside those little beads is our yeast. And that's what we mean by immobilised yeast. The yeast is trapped inside these little beads, which means that I've trapped my enzyme. And therefore, we can run the substrate over the top. It will come in contact with the enzyme and I can easily get my enzyme back out. I'll move the camera a wee bit closer. Hopefully you can start to see all those little beads. And the next stage is once we've finished making the beads, to rinse them just gently in a little tiny sieve. And then they're clean and ready for us to use. So what we've got now is our mobilised yeast beads that we made earlier on. Remember the yeast contains the catalase, which is the enzyme we're interested in here. In the test tube, we've got hydrogen peroxide. Now, when that is broken down by catalase, it forms oxygen and water. Oxygen is a gas, so when the enzyme's doing its job, the gas should cause our immobilised beads to rise to the top of our boiling tube of hydrogen peroxide, and we can time how long it takes for that to happen. So, we're going to take an immobilised yeast bead, and what we're going to do is drop it in. Now, it should sink to the bottom. And then once it's sunk to the bottom, we're going to start the timer and see how long it takes it to rise to the surface. So if we drop one in, stuck to the side, that is not what I wanted to do. Okay, so it's sinking to the bottom. Start the stop clock. I'm going to time how long it takes for an immobilised yeast speed to rise. Remember, when you're doing experiments, you always repeat them to make your results reliable, to show that the same thing happens over and over and over again. And that first one has taken 21 seconds. So, keep a wee record of these. So, the first one has taken 21 seconds. What we'll do is pop another one in so that we can make sure that our results are reliable and we're getting similar times for each of them. And it allows us to calculate an average when we have several results. Right, I now have one. So we'll reset the stop clock, drop this one in so that it falls to the bottom. It's not wanting to fall to the bottom, we'll just give it a wee gentle nudge down. And it's not, it's sitting right at the top. So, we'll maybe ignore that one, try and get another one to go right down to the bottom. Okay, so this one's going all the way down to the bottom, lands at the bottom, and then we start the stop clock to see how long this one is going to take to rise. So the last one took 21 seconds. It's taking longer and there we go 
and that one took 35. So we've got a 21 and a 35 so far. Let's try another one. Okay. Let me see the stop block. I had to drop right in the middle so that it falls all the way down. Nope, that one's landed at the top. It's not falling. To try and get in the middle. Nope, that one has not fallen either. So this is the thing with experiments. Sometimes it's a wee bit of trial and error. I also wonder now if there's too many beads sitting at the top and giving off oxygen and that's making it harder for them to move. Oh, and third time lucky, we just need one. There we go. All the way to the bottom. Start the stop clock. And we'll see how long this one takes to rise. So, so far, a 21 and a 35 seconds. Nope, this one looks like it's going to be longer. No, nope, it's going now. And a 41. Okay, so they've been increasing um, as they go along. So you would now calculate your average from those results. So, as I say, 21 seconds, 35 and 41 seconds for the immobilised yeast to rise to the surface.